Okay, live for the third time. Let's get to the right title. Right. George. Mm -hmm. Five yep. longest IC title reigns since the eighties. So that includes the eighties. That includes all of the eighties. Uh, Ricky Steamboat. Okay. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure you're right. I need the confirmation. Okay, I guess you're not right, bro. Sorry. Sorry wow, to this all right, <laughs> no, That's okay. I figured that one was a shoo-in. <laughs> If you want, I'll give you two more guesses. Uh, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho, I did not see. Wow. All right, I'm not even the third guess. That's just <laughs> embarrassing. This is solo reigns, not, not combined, right? Oh, like one singular reign? Yes, one There's singular There's only one reign. fucking an Two answers. <laughs> I, I'll take it. The Honky Tonk Man. Hon Honky Tonk Man is one. No fucking Miz. Wait, wait. It's Matt's turn. Would you like to take ah, a guess? You can have that one, Matt. I'll say the Miz, but just give it to George. He said The Miz is not Matt, on here. <laughs> what? Take I a point from George. <laughs> take a point from George. It was a safe guess. It was a guess. <laughs> We're looking for Cody Rhodes at 234 days. Shelton Benjamin at 244 days. The Rock at 264 days. That Goat, Mr. Perfect, at 280 days. Honky Tonk Man is number one at, I don't remember how many days. 454 days. And then Macho Man was the uh, third longest at 414. Wow. All right, George. Now the belt that considers you the best in a lot of people's eyes. That WWE title, not the World Heavyweight Ooh. title, not the Universal title, that WWE title. And one singular reign. Yes. Not combining reigns, just one. You know what? No, you uh, know what? Since it's the WWE title, let's do the top 10 guys since the 80s. All right, all right. Even though it still only gives you five possible answers. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Uh, John Cena. John Cena, number seven with 381 days. Number seven, God. Whew. No. Uh... I'm trying to think so hard for a single brain now. <laughs> Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan is on here twice. Wow. He's the third longest reign at 1,474 days and number 10 at 364 days. Oh, CM Punk? CM Punk. Is six at four hundred thirty four days. Damn, I lost my other answer. I had one. Are you punted? The Rock. <laughs> that's that's mine. The Rock is not. Uh, fuck! I just remembered. On here, I just remembered my answer. <laughs> damn! 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 I mean, you still got one more guess if you want it. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns should be on here. Actually, right. no. Wait, he just won uh, the, for the title. Universal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Matt, you got a guess? No, I mean, uh, there's two more possible answers. Um. <laughs> don't don't have all no. day, man. You see, I'm just gonna now. say, 
I'm just going to say Seth Rollins, but <laughs> yeah, that would just get over. Seth is not on here. Bailey, you got a guess? Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is not <clears throat> on here. Wow. It's Macho Man with 371 days and the phenomenal AJ Styles at also 371 days. Wow, AJ's on there. Wow. All right. Well, let's, forget about that. <laughs> let's move on here to the actual show now. Matt, this is your topic exclusively. What do you got to say about... Oh, wow. Coincidence. Uh, <laughs> Broncos being on Monday Night Football. I mean, uh, being in primetime games. What do you got to say about this? Um, yeah, I completely understand why everybody's just so frustrated because uh, the Broncos offense has just been so garbage. Literally, like, the most boring offense that I've seen. But can't take away their defense. Their defense is, like, amazing. And, you know, you, you – you can complain about these like nine to eleven games, nine ten games, but like Denver's defense is holding these teams as well to nine points. It's not just you know our the offense just isn't that great right now. Um, hopefully they get it. You know I think Hackett is just an awful awful play caller as a head coach. He is just terrible. But I will say one thing off of this. Everybody's complaining that the Broncos have been on prime time three three times this year, but the Cowboys have been on prime time every year for the past twenty five years. They're just the prime time kings. So it's just like one year of the Broncos being on prime time isn't going to kill anybody. But we've been seeing the Cowboys for twenty five years and prime time. Uh, before I move on, do you guys have anything to add to that? You won't get any points for it, but. Just want to express your opinion. Broncos country, let's ride. Let's ride. <laughs> let's, let's cry. Let's cry. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Bailey, this is yours exclusively. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, wait, before before this goes. You know what, Matt? I'm sorry, it was a good idea, but uh, I don't even want to risk yeah. pulling up a web browser <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, Devontae Adams has been charged. What do you have to say about that, Bailey? Devonte Adams pushed a cameraman after their game. He was frustrated. He was pissed off. And I feel like a lot of civilians have been getting beat up by football players this year with the streaker at the Rams game. And then now this, I feel like it's at least once a primetime game. Someone's getting beat up. Regardless, Devonte Adams should be suspended for the rest of the season. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a point because I'm sure someone agrees with that, but geez, that's hard. <laughs> he pushed an innocent guy. He was just doing his job. He pushed him down. <laughs> and I heard that uh, he's bringing a lawsuit to him. So, I mean, Devontae Adams might not be able to play because he'll be in jail. <laughs> Anybody have anything to add to this before I move on? No. <laughs> um, yeah, poor guy. I, I just felt so bad for him, but. Um... Oh. It's understandable to like, you know, it's been charged. Like he, he assaulted a dude. Like I'm not gonna lie, guys. From the camera I saw, it looked like the dude ran out, and seen him there, and then stopped. I don't know, but I, I thought he was just running across, and then Devontae Adams just pushed him. I don't know, uh, probably, but I'm just saying it looked like he was trying to get pushed. Yes, me, but. Let's move on. He's gonna he's gonna be rich. He'll never have to work again, probably. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably settle out of court. This is all yours, uh, George. Is Kelsey the like I don't know the Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez of this generation? Uh, he's better. Oh wow, he's better than Antonio Gates and Tony Gonzalez because the numbers don't lie. He'll be among the top of the top. Like he might break like receiver records as a tight end. That's nuts. He's the number one option in Kansas City now, and he's showing it. Okay. Right. Uh, anyone want to add to that? No points on the line? Yeah, uh, just awful take, George. That was the worst take I've ever listened to in my life. The wow. best. He's on his way to be the best tight end ever. I he's agree. Like, he's he's, on, he's yeah, to be like one though. of the best ever, but like um, I mean, can you imagine Tony Gonzalez with a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes? 
every record in the book would be broken. Dude had nobody his whole career. He had Matt Castle, I'm pretty sure, at one point. <laughs> he had Matt Ryan. In prime Matt Ryan. Not even mm-hmm. close to prime Matt Ryan. <laughs> no. They both only have one mm-hmm. MVP. <laughs> I mean, no, I 25 think, yards, think... four touchdowns. Whew. Yeah, that yeah, was a great go. <laughs> Red zone monster. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on. This is for everybody. Uh, Frank Mir wants to fight. I have his retirement fight on a card with his daughter. Uh, I heard uh, Bailey's the biggest MMA fan here. So, Bailey, you want to start it? Uh, I think it's a bad idea because... Why would his daughter want to fight after his her dad gets brutally knocked out? <laughs> I mean, Frank Mir is washed. He hasn't won a fight in I don't know how long. And I think that would just kind of ruin his daughter's momentum going into the fight, seeing her dad just – or I'm, uh, I'm getting stretchered out. I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> you want to follow that up, Matt? <laughs> no, I completely agree with Bailey on this. Um, you know, like – to have them both on the same card, I guess it would be cool. <laughs> but <laughs> Frank Mir, man, like I said, I think Frank Mir was brought up in like the first episode that we played uh, or like we're on. But like Frank Mir is just like so irrelevant right now. Like I wouldn't even care if he fought. Like it would just. <laughs> I agree. He, I don't. He hasn't won a fight, and I don't even know how long. He'd he'd just get destroyed, and then his daughter's just gonna have to think about it. You know, as <laughs> she's. Probably getting beat up too. Him and his daughter would be on the undercard of a Jake Paul card. Like, it, <laughs> is it worth it? Hey, right, George, you want to pick it up from there? Uh, yeah, Frank Mir, you mean Brock Lesnar's bitch? Because that's all I know him as. He's just going to get knocked out, and then his daughter's going to get knocked out, and then it's just going to be a sad night in their household. Mm-hmm. Another one, I guess. All right, let's uh, move on. <laughs> um, since there's only three people here, I guess we'll just cut all the teams ones out. But uh, yeah, who's uh the best return this year? I guess in uh this, I don't know. It does say WWE, but AW. If you guys want to include it, I know you guys are more AW guys. So, what was your favorite return this year, or surprise? Uh. Matt, you want to go first? Um, you know what? Um, I I don't. I really don't even have an answer. There's like nothing that I've like really been hyped about for a return. So, um, we're docking show, bro. I gotta I, have an answer. I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, I watching the highlights. Uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt was like the coolest entrance. Like that I've seen in a minute. So, yeah, I, I really just don't have an answer right now. Okay. George, you want to go second? Thank you. Uh, by far, I think the coolest return yet has been uh, Bray Wyatt because that thing was that was sick with a shout-out to Brody Lee. The puppets everywhere. People as mm-hmm. puppets everywhere. The fireflies, like, lighting up. The logo hitting before it happens. Uh, an honorable mention, I guess, to the piece of shit Phil Brooks aka CM Punk <laughs> uh, how people have turned so quickly it was a cool <laughs> return I guess and nostalgia and all that seven years or whatever but then he turned out to be that was a, over a year ago a scumbag ah uh, well you know close enough <laughs> well, no, wait, uh, before you go Bailey there was a shout out to uh, Brody Lee Luke Harper the door and like the light behind him was a shout out to his to Brody's debut as the or an AEW. Huh. The exalted one. I gotta yep. see it. I gotta see it. All right, uh Bailey, you ready? Yeah. Um well Bray Wyatt, obviously, as Matt said, that was that was just so cool. And I mean Bray Wyatt, he just always brings the theatrics and you know, like it's just so cool. But from a wrestling standpoint, I think since you know Bray Wyatt hasn't done anything yet, I'd say Cody Rhodes had maybe moments of the year debuting at WrestleMania. That was very cool. Uh, MJF, 
his return was just so freaking cool. I'm biased because you know I was in you know Chicago for that, but it was I've never heard a crowd get so loud before ever. When you know MJF put the scarf on, they popped for a scarf. That was pretty epic. And then you know he's not wrestling, but you know Paul Levesque, Triple H, he returned from you know almost dying, and now he's running the WWE and making WWE more relevant than it was for like a decade. So I'd say Triple H probably has the best return. I don't mean to put all the power in Matt's hands here, but he did say the B word, Matt. Should I dock him a point? He was saying he's biased off of, uh, yeah. like, he was physically at, um, uh, know, at the show. We're so. not biased around here, though, bro. That's all I'm saying. Oh, shit. You're right, you're right. <laughs> dock a point. <laughs> all right, George. Now that you heard Matt and I's take, what do you do? You agree with this? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Right. We have rules right. around here. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I gotta leave my bias at the door. All right. Let's move on. All right. Worst roughing the passer call. I'll enlarge it a little bit for you guys. Worst call. Derek Carr's, Tom Brady's, or Patrick Mahomes not getting the same call for getting slung down just like Brady. And uh, I know Matt's the biggest Brady fan here, so uh, you can go last. Bailey, you want to start this one? I think. Are you not the biggest uh, Brady fan here, Matt? Here, like on the show, I would say yeah. Yeah. What? What? What are you not shaking your head for, man? <laughs> I think I'm like in love with Brady. I just have my opinion that he's the you best are, ever. I, I just said you're the biggest Brady fan. <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Matt. I mean, uh, Bailey, you ready to go? I I think the refs, they are very guilty of like protecting you know like the legendary quarterbacks like Tom Brady and I mean Aaron Rodgers would probably get a call like that uh I was shocked that Derek Carr got the call because he's kind of nobody but I feel like the refs really need to sit down and like decide what is a roughing the passer call because I don't know it's it's been a crazy year I mean uh Tua I don't think he got rough in the passer for the two times he was concussed and isn't that what the rules there for is to protect the quarterbacks? Tom Brady was fine. Derek Carr was fine. You know, just they, they need to be they there just needs to be some regulation. Like they can't just be throwing it whenever. Especially when the game's on the line. Like let the people play. Uh were you done? Yeah, yeah. Alright, bro. I didn't get a I didn't get the answer, man. Who was the worst yeah. rough in the past at all? Yeah, I got I think answer, it was bro. Oh, I think it was Tom Brady. I think that was the worst rough in the passer call because the game was on the line and they kind of – the Falcons could have won that game if they got that or if they didn't get the rough in the passer call. All right, George, are you ready? Yep. Go ahead. I think it was Carr got, got the word. They're not their Carr getting the word because it was just a bad call, but the player on the – who got called the – obviously got the end of the deal. Uh, he was just trying to make a great play, a pivotal point in the game, and got completely screwed over. His team got screwed over, and the refs completely affected the outcome of the game, which is something that should just never happen in football or in any sport, really, besides wrestling, where it's, you know, <laughs> part of a story or something. But football is just a sport. It's two teams competing to see who's the best, and when somebody makes a great play that's taken away by a silly flag, it's just... It's hard to see. Okay, all right. Matt, you ready? Yeah. Um, I agree, I agree with you, George. Like, um, I, I, I can't stand when refs take over the game, as, especially when it's, like, a, a crucial point uh, in, in that game. That's, like, what I can't stand the most. And from what it seemed like, um, I think Derek Carr had the worst call just because, like, when you're reading through the rule book, it it's specifically says like you can't drive the quarterback after he throws the ball like into the ground like he didn't even throw the ball yet the ball was still in his hands and that gave the Chiefs momentum to get the ball back essentially and they didn't but still like the Chiefs won I agree with Tom Brady it was a crucial point uh or yeah point of the game like and them him getting swung around like that I truly believe that the refs threw that flag because of what happened to Tua earlier that week so mm-hmm. 
they were a lot more cautious than uh, with the roughing the passer call. But I still think Derek Carr had the worst call out of all of them. Uh, For no points here, though, if Brady got that call, do you guys think Pat should have got that call? Yeah, I mean, you got to keep the rules pretty simple, like pretty uh, equal. So, if we're not allowed to hit quarter, allowed to hit quarter. (laughs) All right, let's move on. Also, guys, I didn't write these ones down, so uh, the show could end at any moment now because I don't remember which one's the last one. So, let's (laughs) move on to. Start, bench, cut. Matt, you went last last time, so you can go first. Out of these three, RJ Barrett, Tyler Hero, Jordan knocked out pool. Who are you going with? Or what, what, what are yeah, you going uh, with? The guy with the black eye. That's who I'm starting. You know, I'm starting uh, Jordan Poole. He seems to have the most upside and seems to probably have the best uh, veterans around him to help him develop, in which that has shown. Uh, he had a little ups and downs throughout the uh playoffs where he was like so inconsistent but you know he showed up when it really mattered in the playoffs like he had those games where he went on a six seven point run on himself like within less than a minute so like i'd, re- I'd start him i think he has the most like bright future in the nba out of these three okay, wait wait um, wait wait are you done with your start yeah all right let's switch it up a little bit uh okay. george who's getting benched Who's getting benched? Can I? Can I? Uh, I'm gonna bench R.J. Barrett. Yeah, I think he's. I don't see the t- the hype in Tyler Harrow, and I've always been a fan of R.J. Barrett ever since like watching him with at Duke. So I'm gonna stick with him over somebody. I'm sure is okay. that is good of a baller. All right, all right. Uh, Bailey, you're in a tough. Uh, situation here. Why is Tyler Hero getting cut? Tyler Hero is getting cut because uh, he needs to be humbled. He thinks he's the greatest <laughs> player in the league. He thinks he's the MVP. No, he's he. I, th- I think he was sixth man of the year, and um, I mean that's a big deal. But yeah, he needs to be kind of brought back down to earth and shown that he is not as good as he thinks he is. All right, and uh, first time ever, I'll let you uh. Now just go. What's your start bench cut out of these three? Yeah, mine. Go. Yeah. No, Bailey. Bailey, go. Oh, oh, okay. We'll reverse the order. We'll get back to you, Matt. All right. I would actually start uh, R.J. Barrett because, I mean, he, as George said, he played for Duke. He's, you know, playing for the Knicks right now. Those are two – they have some pretty crazy fan bases, so there's a lot of expectations – around him and he seems to you'd be handling that just fine and that's the kind of person i'd want to be leading my team uh i would bench tyler hero because as i said he's great coming off the bench he's uh you know six man of the year he's he can change the game when coming off the bench and then i would cut jordan pool because he seems like a cancer to the team you know there he got punched for a reason draymond green you know he might be swinging for no reason but uh knowing draymond but if he push one of the stars to knock him out, I think he needs to be cut. All right. George, you want to do your start bench cut, actually, how you would prefer to do it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I would also start RJ Barrett. Uh, again, big fan. Couldn't do it because Matt. But <laughs> silly boy who got knocked out. Mm-hmm. His own teammate, obviously a cancer to the, the locker room. He's going to get cut. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bench Tyler. Okay. Right. Now, Matt, your boy's done crapped on your uh, start pick. <laughs> what do you yeah. want to say about it? Finish yours up. Yeah, I, I definitely, um, you know, uh, did you not see the video? I mean, I, I don't know what Jordan Poole said, but he was just kicking back, being cool. And then Draymond, are you sure that Draymond isn't the cancer to this team? Because literally <laughs> his mouth has not been shut for this whole summer, man. And he thinks he's like the key piece to the Warriors championships. When in reality, he's the fourth most important piece to that whole championship team. So I don't think that uh, Jordan Poole's a cancer, you know. And obviously he has shown 
in the NBA that he has the most upside out of these three. Um, and it, it's not by, uh, like, you know, I, I wouldn't say R.J. Barrett doesn't because that's who I would bench. I'm, I'm benching R.J. Barrett. I'm not saying that he doesn't still have upside. I just don't think he has the team around him um, to develop or, or the coaching staff to develop into a, a great talent. Um, and that's just unfortunate, but I'm, I'm benching RJ Barrett for that reason, but I still think he can still hold his own. And then I'm cutting Tyler hero. I mean, the six man of the year, um, really just took a crap on the Miami heat in the playoffs. Like he really didn't do anything as the six man of the year, um, against the Celtics. I mean, he got hurt and didn't play two games, but when he did play the rest of those games, he didn't do anything. Like, and that's the sixth man of the year. That's supposed to be the the leading uh, player of off your bench. And he didn't do anything. And I saw more upside in this season with Jordan Poole than anybody out of these three. Okay. Uh, Jordan Poole might have brain damage. That's why I cut him. <laughs> I'm getting knocked out like that. Any uh, words hey, before I uh, switch it up or change topics? Nope. Go. Uh, if this was me, I think I'm starting Poole. Benching Tyler. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Starting pool. So starting RJ benching pool. Cutting Tyler. There we go. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure this is the last one. So this is for the game. Probably. Oh, didn't mean to do that. That's for sure. You want to uh, pronounce that name there, Matt? Because I don't want to not say it right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Victor Wembenyama. I guess thoughts on him, who should uh, tank for him, and uh, yeah, let's go from there. Uh, who's got the least amount of points? I think Matt... Go ahead and start with, yeah, start with George, though, because uh, I, I went first like twice in a row, so uh, okay. uh, I'd say. Actually, or George, I don't even know, know if you've gone first. first yet, so it's all you, man. All right. Uh, I think he's great, obviously. I think that's all to be believed, and I think... The Trailblazers really need to tank for him. I think any team needs to tank for him. He'll be a game changer. But mm-hmm. he's somebody that has like an established culture, at least established starters, one or two even, can help like bring him to another level, and he'll be a very successful player. All right, all right. Um, all right, Bailey, you want to go? Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited for him to come to the league. He's a uh... I mean, he's absolutely giant, and but he moves like you know, like a Kevin Durant or something. As George said, I think he's going to be change the game immediately. He's just going to come and absolutely change. And I'd like to see him. I mean, I'd like to see him on the Lakers, honestly. Come in and then immediately, you know, playing with LeBron, playing with you know Russell Westbrook, playing with Anthony Davis. I think having him at the five and then Anthony Davis at the four would be the most unstoppable team the league has ever seen. <laughs> Will it happen? Will the Lakers get the number one overall pick? Obviously not, but uh, could you imagine? Oh, my gosh. I'm very excited for him. All right, Matt, you want to go from there? Yeah, um, I think that he is probably arguably the best prospect that we could possibly have seen in our lifetimes. I don't, We've never seen somebody this tall – um, with that amount of skill set, we've never seen, but it's anybody that can literally pull up from three feet behind three point line and, and just splash it. Got a fadeaway like Kevin Durant can block like Rudy Gobert. Um, you know, he seems like the like if you were to make a most complete modern day basketball player package, this is like the guy that it, it, he fits every single skill set. Um, who should tank for him in reality everybody should tank for this guy but nobody is but OKC Thunder they obviously have every single freaking pick known to humankind for the next 30 years mm-hmm. so literally I have like six grade students that are, are in my school district that are probably going to be in OKC you know they're going to be in OKC uniform in like 10 years but um, they're probably going to end up getting him because they just don't have a team that can win for the next year in general, so they'll probably tank even worse. All right, all right. 
see if that was for the game. Oh, and it was, guys. That means, let's see, Betty's got 29, Matt's got 27. I, I George has 28, point. bro. Oh, my gosh. Wow, right. wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, before you raise the title, before you raise the title, <laughs> do you want to give them a shot to tie it up and go into overtime? Yes. All right, all right, all right. I got uh, the question. I'll give them a shot. I got the question. All right. George, you need one point to tie it up. Ah, uh, crap. Hang on, hang on. All right, I'll give you within 1,500. No, I'll give you within 1,000 yards. How many rushing yards did Frank Gore have? Oh, 11,000? See, I'm pretty sure I know how many he has, but let me just be sure here. I know it's over 10. Frank Gore has exactly 1,600 yards. Wow. Okay, <laughs> I didn't think it was that fucking high. All right. Uh, any final words, uh, George, for our black face you out? Or black you uh, out? Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for having me again. Don't do that. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people at home. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to use this word. Uh, uh, thank you for having me again. And, uh, good night, baby. That's all I got to say. Wow, he's just playing. He's gonna. Matt's not gonna make it to overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so did Frank Gore have sixteen hundred or sixteen thousand career yards? Did I say sixteen hundred? Yeah, uh, I was yeah. like, that's it. I yeah, was like, there's no bad. way. <laughs> sixteen thousand people at home. <laughs> and also, Matt said. Uh, I mean, Derek said, Matt, you look like Rob someone. I don't know what he's getting at. Is that a person? Like I'm ready to rob somebody. Oh, That's what it says. yeah. Right. <laughs> I was trying to listen to George, bro. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Two points. Two points. Come on, man. You can clutch this. Let's go. Uh, right. For some reason. Let's keep George up there. Oh, wait. There. He didn't believe in me. There's the issue. There we go. All right. Matt. Yes. I'll give you within two slots. Where is Paul Pierce on the top three pointers made list? Uh, um, three point. Like, do I name like between like say one and two or like one and three? Do I say that? No, just wherever you guess, I'll give you within two slots of it. Dude, he has to be. Top 11. Paul Pierce <laughs> is 10th. He's actually tied for 10th, so. I knew he was like, yeah, I knew he was top 10. Like, I knew he was up there. So there's one. You need one All right. more. All right. Um, oh, my gosh. Bailey, what, what topic <laughs> should I pick? Oh, actually, g give me a category in football. Make it fair for him. Mm, interceptions is that interceptions. category defense okay uh george you're still on screen but you're not on here hold up yep hold up a number with your hands okay seven 2017 matt give me somebody who was in the top three for interceptions 2017. Oh my gosh, dude. Um, this is to go to overtime with Bailey. Stefan Gilmore. Stefan Gilmore is not correct. Bailey is the champion. No uh. overtime. <laughs> 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 Bailey, this is your first time here, and you killed it. And my timer's gone, so I can't give you... Here, here's a very fast timer. Talk your stuff. Go ahead. Hey, I want to start with, I'm completely honored to be here. This has been the greatest night of my entire life. And I will defend this belt. I will be a defending and fighting champion. So come and get it. Come and take this from me, because I 
I'm, I'm going to go on a six win streak, seven win streak, eight win streak, 10 win streak, 100 win streak. This is, I'm the champ. Let's go. <laughs> also, Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts is the greatest quarterback, maybe of all time. Miles Sanders, our receiving core, is the greatest receiving core, maybe of all time. Our running back core, maybe the deepest roster in NFL history. 16 and 0, 17 and 0, 18 and 0, Super Bowl, Eagles. Let's go. And uh, get back to the answer. It was uh, Kevin Byer, Darius Slay, or A.J. Bouye. Thanks for being on, guys. Hey, thank you so much.